I'm going to commence my talk with a, first of all, speaking about the Immaculate Heart, first 20 minutes. And the next 20 minutes, we'll be speaking about the Sacred Heart. <coughs> Pope Benedict, <coughs> excuse me, last year spoke about how these devotions are very, very important. And there are tremendous websites available on the internet and you will see on some of the overheads going up that there is reference to websites and I make no secret of that because a lot of what I'm going to say is available on the internet. And essentially it's important to get back in our parishes the holy hours. The holy hour on the first Friday and on the first Saturday. The nine first Fridays and the five first Saturdays for the Immaculate Heart, the nine for the Sacred Heart. Now Our Lady has spoken, there's been a lot of talk in terms of Mary in the last, since Vatican II, but if we go before that and we see the wonderful things that have happened, they've happened since Vatican II as well. But when we look at Fatima, when we look at Lourdes, when we look at the wonderful words that were said to St. Lucy, St. Lucia rather, Sister Lucia, she's not saint yet, but I'm sure she is, who passed away a year or so ago in Portugal, one of the three children to remain, who remained, who saw the visions of Fatima in 1917. But I want to emphasize what the first five first Saturdays are and what we must do, because time is limited, you could actually go a whole day on each subject. And the first is to keep Our Lady's company for 15 minutes while meditating on one or more of the mysteries of the rosary and pray five decades of the rosary. Go to confession. Offer all of the previous four conditions in reparation for the offences committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Years passed and many wondered why five first Saturdays. And Lucia told, under obedience, to ask our Lord and Our Lady the reason. And it was our Lord himself who told her that he wanted reparation for all those who were denying his mother, slandering her, even particularly in five ways, denying her immaculate conception, denying her divine maternity, denying her perpetual virginity, denying her to little children and turning them away from her, and dishonouring her images. We've even seen that last one in New Zealand, sadly. Most of these offences against the Immaculate Heart of Mary are committed by all sorts of people. And it's important to appreciate that it's only through prayer and through the love of Christ in the heart that we can actually come closer to God and through the tremendous love of Our Lady for her Son and bringing us all closer. The theme of this weekend is the face, the face of Christ. But on the face is eyes and the eye is the eye of the soul. It's the messenger of the soul. And with the soul, we see the heart, the heart of flame, the heart of determination, the heart of love. And it's important to appreciate that when we see these things of Our Lady, hear these things of Our Lady, hear different things, that we, it's important we keep things in perspective. We have all been given the gift of faith. And it's a wonderful gift. And it's important that we, in our own special way, really try and make Our Lady's name honourable. I will run through those first, those four, those five conditions that were placed for the five first Saturdays again. To keep Our Lady company for 15 minutes while meditating on one or more of the mysteries of the rosary. Pray five decades of the rosary go to confession, receive Holy Communion, 
offer all of the four previous conditions in reparation for the offences committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. If we could now just have a look at those conditions on screen. There's, there we are. There are, confession may be made within eight days, and especially with the intention of making reparation. And Mary, in the last, in 2005, was on the front page of Time magazine, a parishioner in Devonport gave it to me. We'll now have a look at that, that photo. It was actually a very interesting article. There's a lot of papers up there. Have you got it? You haven't got it. There it is, yeah. Now that was on the front of Pine. Can we just have it down a bit, please? Just down a wee bit. It's in December 2005, I think. Yeah, there it is. And it was actually a very interesting discussion about Mary and how our separated brothers and sisters are coming closer to actually coming to a greater understanding of the role of the Mary, the Mother of God and the life of the church. And it's wonderful that in an ecumenical way this has happened. And this has happened through all sorts of reasons. It's happened because of the tremendous love of God and it's also happened because prayer has been involved. People have prayed. Now the link between devotions to Mary's Immaculate Heart and the heart of Jesus is shown in many ways. From scripture we hear a short time after Paschal had carried out, no that's, that's something different, this is an example, a short time after Pascal had carried out the first experience in modern physics and Descartes had perfected the mathematical instruments which would make possible the development of the sciences, Jesus appeared to an obscure nun and showing her his heart said to her, this is the heart that has so loved men. Then, as men did not listen to the message and the corruption of the world continued, the Virgin Mary appeared to the children of Fatima. She showed them her heart and said, the Lord wishes to establish devotion to my immaculate heart in the world. If what I say is done, many souls will be saved and there will be peace. The remedy that God offers for the evils of the world is to show us his heart and that of his mother. We have learned to recognize the love of God has in our regard, to recognize it, to make it our belief, St. John said. And the Christian solution to the problem and desperate call of the world will always be to believe in love, to give ourselves up to it and to pursue it, the will and the strength that God gives us in enabling us to convey that to others. Historically, devotion to Mary grew up in parallel, but at a lesser pitch than devotion to the Sacred Heart. Only starting to become more prominent during the time of St. John Eudes. Even then, it was not until the apparitions concerning the miraculous medal made to Catherine Labori in 1830 and the establishment of a society dedicated to the Immaculate Heart of Mary at the Church of Our Lady of Victories in Paris in 1836 that this particular devotion became really known. And since then the devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary has grown more widespread in the church, particularly since the apparitions of Fatima. The main difference between the two devotions is that one is concerned 
with Jesus, emphasizing his divine heart and being full of love for us all. But this love for the most part being ignored or rejected, while devotion to Mary's heart is essentially concerned with the love that her, has, her heart has for Jesus, for God. It is not an end in itself. And really the love of her heart is meant to be a model for the way we should love God. So as in all things Marian, she leads us closer to God rather than becoming an obstacle in our way. The fact that her heart is immaculate, that is sinless, means that she is the only fully human person who is able to really give us that example of what sanctity can do and how we can progress on that road. Honouring Mary's immaculate heart is really just another way of honouring Mary as a person who was chosen to be the mother of Christ, the mother of God. Recognising her extraordinary holiness and the immense love she bestowed on Jesus as his mother, the person who was called to share in and cooperate in his redemptive sufferings. The whole aim of this devotion is to unite people throughout the world to God through Mary's heart. And this process involves the ideas of consecration and reparation. A person is consecrated to Mary's immaculate heart as a way of being completely devoted to God. This involves a total gift of self, something only ultimately possible with reference to God. But Mary helps us as the greatest of saints to come closer to Jesus. There have been some criticisms of the whole idea of consecration to Mary, with some arguing that it is improper to speak in such terms since it obscures the essential consecration to God. This position, though, seems to go against the traditional approach as exemplified by St. Louis de Montfort, one that has been essentially accepted and acted upon by Pius XII and John Paul II in the 20th century. If Jesus had only wanted a consecration to his own sacred heart, then clearly he, rather than Mary, would have appeared repeatedly over the last several centuries. The fact that it is Mary who has appeared in so many places and that the church at its highest level has accepted this indicates that Mary's role is central and that consecration to her is not illogical, providing it is clearly understood that belonging to Mary is a privileged means of belonging to Christ. Mary holds her position, the position she got, not through just going around with her hands joined all day. We know, we know that in her life that there was, it wasn't easy. How many could actually, how, how many could actually go across a desert and walk just after having given birth? And I believe me, I've seen the desert, and I'm sure a lot of you have, down past the Dead Sea to Egypt. And it's, you just wonder with snakes and scorpions, and it's a very long way. I didn't get to the end of it in the car. And I had air conditioning. <laughs> it's, it, you know, you just, when you go there and you see just the ardour, the fer how ferv fervent they were, and you appreciate that these people were really of God and that what they attained, they worked for in prayer and thought and prayer and action. The idea of making reparation both for our own sins and because of a com common membership of the mystical body of Christ for those of others is only an extension of the basic gospel message a message that continues to be valid. As St. Paul says, Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I complete what is lacking in Christ's afflictions 
for the sake of his body. That is the church. So with those beautiful words, we reflect on her life. We look at the tremendous messages she has given, particularly at Fatima, and particularly to that has been conveyed to us through Sister Lucia under duress at times. But it's important to appreciate that what some of the saints have also said about Mary. And it's important to understand that what they have said is something which we can all treasure. The saints throughout their lives have always kept Mary in the picture. Mary has often been there. We look at St. Bernard in the 11th century, tremendous devotion to Our Lady and other great saints who really wanted Mary to be portrayed as she should be and not just as a figment of imagination or a figment of distrust. So we must learn then from the tremendous history of the church that devotion to Our Lady's Immaculate Heart is something we should all treasure and work with in prayer. Just check the time. Yes, I better move on to the Sacred Heart. Sacred Heart has had a really interesting history too. In the 11th and 12th centuries, we find the first indications of the devotion to the Sacred Heart. It was in the Benedictine and Cistercian monasteries, and as I said, St. Bernard was one of the great promulgators of that. Until recent times, we've seen with St. Bonaventure, St. Gertrude, and also St. Gertrude on the Feast of St. John the Evangelist laid her head near the wound in the Saviour's side and heard the beating of the Divine Heart. She asked John if he had felt these pulsations the night of the Last Supper and why he had never spoken of this experience. John replied that this revelation had been reserved for subsequent ages when the world, having grown cold, would have need of it to rekindle its love. So St. Gertrude did that on the Feast of St. John the Evangelist. On August the 31st in 1670, the first feast of the Sacred Heart was celebrated in the Grand Seminary of Rennes. The feast was soon spread to other dioceses and the devotion was adopted in various religious communities throughout France. Margaret Mary Alloquay of the mon in a monastery was chosen by Christ to reveal the desires of his heart and to confide the task of inspiring new life to the devotion. She didn't know anything about it prior to the revelations. And they were numerous. And the following appar apparitions were especially remarkable, that which occurred on the feast again of St. John, when Jesus permitted Margaret Mary as he had formerly allowed St. Gertrude to rest her head upon his heart and then disclose to her the wonders of his love, telling her that he desired to make them known to all mankind and to diffuse the treasures of his goodness and that he had chosen her for this work. He requested to be honored under the figure of his heart of flesh when he appeared radiant with love and ask for a devotion. And could we now please put up the devotions to the Sacred Heart? The um, promises. I think they're in red. No, they're not. Actually, no, they're not. That's the litany. It's under heart.com. Full page. Just on one page.
Here we are. I will give them all the graces necessary for their state of life. I will give peace in their families. I will console them in all their troubles. I will be their refuge in life and especially in death. I will abundantly bless all their undertakings. Sinners shall find in my heart the source and infinite ocean of mercy. Tepid souls shall become fervent. Fervent souls shall rise speedily to great perfection. I will bless those places wherein the image of my sacred heart shall be exposed and venerated. I will give to priests the power to touch the most hardened hearts. Persons who propagate this devotion shall have their names eternally written in my heart. In the excess of the mercy of my heart, I promise you that my all powerful love will grant to all those who will receive communion on the first Fridays for nine consecutive months the grace of final repentance and that they will not die in my displeasure nor without receiving the sacraments and my heart will be their refuge their secure refuge in that last hour perhaps we can have that beautiful picture of the sacred heart up now thank you rather than looking at me all the time. <laughs> so you can see these, those, with those promises, there is a, a specific devotion, and I'd like to say more, but I'm, I'm just concerned for time. So I think what I'll do now is just speak more about the history of the devotion. And the Feast of the Sacred Heart was approved for specified diocese by Clement the 13th in 1765, and extended to the whole church by Pius IX in 1856. In 1889, Leo elevated to the rank of first class and sent out an encyclical letter in 1899 dedicating the whole Catholic world to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And devotion to the Sacred Heart is also an essential component, was an essential component of Pope John Paul II's hopes for the new evangelization called for by the church. For evangelization today, he said, the heart of Christ must be recognized as the heart of the church. It is he, he who calls us to conversation, to conversion, to reconciliation. It is he who leads pure hearts and those hungering for justice along the way of the Beatitudes. It is he who receives the warm communion of the members of the one body. It is he who enables us to adhere to the good news and to accept the promise of eternal life. It is he who sends us out on mission, the heart to heart, with Jesus broadens the human heart on a global scale. And there are quite a few relevant documents and cyclicals that have been put out. But now let's have a look at the scriptural basis to the devotion. Jesus, who was one with the Father, invites his disciples to, to live close communion with him, to model their lives on him and on his teaching. He in turn reveals himself as meek and humble heart of heart. Meek and humble of heart. That's in Matthew 11. It can be said that in a certain sense, devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus is a form of the prophetic, prophetic and evangel, uh, evangelistic gaze of all Christians on him who was pierced. We hear that in John. The gaze of all Christians on the side of Christ, transfixed by a lance, and from which flowed blood and water, symbols of the wondrous sacrament of the church. 
The Gospel of St. John recounts the showing of the, the Lord's hands and his side to his disciples. And we've heard that in the readings in the last week at Mass. And of his invitation to Thomas to put his hand into his side. This event has also had the notable influence and the origin and the development of the devotion to the Sacred Heart. These and other texts present Christ as the Paschal Lamb, victorious and slain, and that's in Apocalypse 5. They were objects of much reflection by the fathers who unveiled their doctrinal richness. They invited the faithful to look at the mysteries of Christ by contemplating the Sacred Heart. And we see that amazing picture as Christ as the door, knocking on the door with a lantern. It was open for you when his side was opened by the lance. Remember what flowed out from his side. Thus, choose where you want to enter Christ. We know that by dying, we rise with Christ. And how is, is the Sacred Heart important in our spiritual life? And as I said, and I'll give you some references shortly, but on the internet there are amazing references to the Sacred Heart devotions, and I'll just run through a few now. There's personal consecration, described by Pius XI as undoubtedly the principal devotional practice used in relationship to the Sacred Heart. It's personal consecration, and there are prayers of personal consecration. And perhaps now we might like to put the prayer of consecration to the Sacred Heart, and we'll all pray that together. O sacred heart of Jesus, to thee I consecrate and offer up my person and my life, my actions, trials, and sufferings, that my entire being may be henceforth only employed in loving, honoring, and glorifying thee. This is my irrevocable will to belong entirely to thee and to do all for thy love, renouncing with my whole heart all that can displease thee. I take thee, O sacred heart, for the sole object of my love, the protection of my life, the pledge of my salvation, the remedy of my frailty and inconstancy, the reparation for my sins, all the defects of my life, and my secure refuge at the hour of my death. Be thou, O most merciful heart, my justification before God thy Father, and screen me from his anger which I have so justly merited. I fear all from my own weakness, and malice, but placing my entire confidence in thee, O heart of love, I hope all from thine infinite goodness, humiliate me all that can displease or resist thee, imprint thy pure love so deeply in my heart that I may never forget thee or be separated from thee. I beseech thee through thine infinite goodness, grant that my name be engraved upon thy heart, for in this place all my happiness and all my glory to live and to die as one of thy devoted servants. Amen. This is a, this is a digression. We often hear comment in the Hail Mary when we use the word thee, as if we Catholics are calling her God. And actually, it wasn't until 
I studied history and I went into some really manuscripts of New Zealand from the, from the 19th century, a book written in 1870, which was 30 years after the Treaty of Waitangi, and a book, one book a little earlier, where at the treaty they were saying to Hobson, O oh, thee, Governor, can we have thy documents? Because it's old English. And that's where that tradition comes. So please, if you ever hear that, say why we do it. And there's nothing wrong with it. It is actually old English. It's not as if we're putting Mary as part of the deity. Mary is very close to the deity, as we all know. But it's old English in terms of a very, very honourable person. And why shouldn't we still use that today? So there's personal consecration, and then there's family consecration. Family consecration to the Sacred Heart, in which the family, by virtue of the sacrament of holy matrimony, already participating in the mystery of the unity and love of Christ for the Church, is dedicated to Christ, so that he might reign in the hearts of all its members. And there are beautiful prayers for that, as well as displaying the Sacred Heart in the home. And then there's the Litany of the Heart of Jesus, which we will now pray together. It's the red one. <laughs> Poor lady stepping in. <laughs> and we'll all, pray this, we'll all pray this together. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father in heaven, have mercy. No, God, the Father in heaven, have mercy on us. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, Son of the Eternal Father, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, formed by the Holy Spirit in the womb of the Virgin Mother, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, substantially united to the Word of God, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus of infinite majesty, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, sacred temple of God, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, tabernacle of the Most High, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, house of God and gate of heaven, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, burning furnace of charity, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, abode of the justice and love, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, full of goodness and love, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, abyss of all virtues, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, most worthy of all praise, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, King and centre of all hearts, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, in whom are all treasures of wisdom and knowledge, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, in whom dwells the fullness of divinity, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, in whom the Father was well pleased, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, of whose fullness we have all received, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, desire of everlasting hills, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, patient and most merciful, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, enriching all who invoke thee, spare us, O Lord. Heart of Jesus, fountain of life and holiness, graciously hear us, O Lord. Heart of Jesus, propitiation for our sins, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, loaded down, make our hearts like to thine. Heart of Jesus, bruised for our offences, make our hearts like to thine. Heart of Jesus, obedient to death, make our hearts like to thine. Heart of Jesus, pierced with a lance, make our hearts like to thine. Heart of Jesus, source of all consolation, make our hearts like to thine. Heart of Jesus, our life and resurrection, make our hearts like to thine. Heart of Jesus, our peace and our reconciliation, make our hearts unlike to thine. 
heart of Jesus, victim for our sins, make our hearts like to thine. Heart of Jesus, salvation of those who trust in thee, make our hearts like to thine. Heart of Jesus, hope of those who die in thee, make our hearts like to thine. Heart of Jesus, delight of all the saints, make our hearts like to thine. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who taketh away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who taketh away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Jesus, meek and humble of heart, make our hearts unto thine. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, look upon the heart of thy most beloved Son and upon the praises and satisfaction which he offers thee in the name of sinners and to those who implore thy mercy in thy great goodness, grant forgiveness in the name of the same Jesus Christ, thy Son, who livest and reignest with thee forever and ever. Amen. There are some beautiful devotions to the, that in the church. I'll never forget what Pope John the Twenty Third said. He said, "I'm opening the windows to let fresh air in." But what he didn't say was, "I'm opening the windows to let everything blow out." <laughs> and it's important. There are wonderful devotions, and Divine Mercy are on a lot of these websites too. That will go up now. There's amazing websites, not that you, you just need to go into a Google search. Those of you who don't know what a Google search is, I'm sure someone will show you. And just type in the word Sacred Heart. Or you can do other, you can use other search engines like Yahoo or Live. And just take, take, type in Sacred Heart and Immaculate Heart together. Or type in Devotions. No, it's actually the, um, the websites, this is the final two, yep. Yeah. And you can, just, you can just type in, and, and they will bring up all the different references, or you can even just type in the act of reparation to the Sacred Heart, because that is also very important, that act of reparation for the sorrow for, for sins. But there are also the devotions to the five wounds of Christ, and beautiful prayers that you can get on the internet. And then, of course, the act of reparation, a prayer which the faith will mindful of the infinite goodness of Christ implore mercy for the offences committed in so many ways against the Sacred Heart. So then we pray that, take this out to your parishes, and there will be, that's, the, that's some of the websites, you can just see there, it gives you a good example of what's available, rather than hand out things here. It's, the, the internet is just loaded with it. There's Mother Angelica's ETWN network, they've got it, and also another very good site is the www.thussacredheart.com Mother Angelica says www.etwn.com and but there are and if you can't find it there you'll actually get it in Google anyway if you just put Sacred Heart and Immaculate Heart up but they will give you all these devotions and one last one is what I'm setting a website up for New Zealand and I've got the it's all it's under construction so as to speak and it's that last that last one there with www.sacredheart.com Anyway, it's, it's, it's www.sacredheart.org.nz. Have we got, can you just put that up? Have you got it there? It's easy to see it and remember it. And I'm setting that up, and what we'll do, I'm going to actually put a lot of these links on and, and set up prayers to the Sacred Heart and the Immaculate Heart on that, on that actual website. So, and also parishes where the devotion is available. Now, we're doing it in Devonport. Every first Friday we have... Blessed Sacrament, 11 o'clock. An exposition for an hour before Mass at midday on the first Friday. And then on the first Saturday we have devotions at, we have Mass at 9 and then devotions starting at 9.30 to 10.30 to the Immaculate Heart. So that's the site that I'm setting up. You'll, if you go on there, you'll just, uh, there's a big, like a roadwork sign saying under construction. Believe me, it certainly is <laughs> under construction. I've spent many, many hours at it so far, but and on there will be an opportunity also for prayer, for petitions, 
for people to pray throughout the world for any, any need, but also, importantly, to actually see where you can actually go, a place near you for devotions to the Immaculate Heart and the Sacred Heart. And that'll be up and running in the next, uh, the next few weeks, God willing. So thank you one and all, and God bless you.